morning, everybody. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I am actually half in the smithy here. I'm watching where I'm backing up to. He's got quite stuff all over here. It's a little dangerous. He is making hinges today for our doors. So I thought I would ask you on live camera, how does it feel now to have the main, the big pressure off of us? Well, it definitely feels good. Um, and it's still, you still have the pressure try and finish and everything else and get everything looking better and wrapped up and get this place over. Yeah. We've just, we've enjoyed a couple good days here of just being at a different pace and just kind of enjoying life, getting our health back in order and feels really good. <laughs> good morning, family. Good morning to you too, Chad. Good morning, Miss Tammy. Chad. Good morning, Miss Deborah. It is a glorious day here. It has been beautiful weather. We're gonna have some cooler temps here and some rain by the looks of things. But I thought I would, ah, good morning, Miss Shelley. <laughs> but he is gonna be working on hinges and, and I'm gonna show you some of the things we've done actually since Thursday. Were you gonna say something? Um, if, if they wanna see, this is gonna end up being. Hang on, I'm gonna spin it around here. Okay. This is a, one of the hinges. Found it out, forge. Um, this here goes like such. Like such, and that's your hinge. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm working on. I got to make several more of these up. So. That's what I'm working on right now. Yeah. Try and get them made up and supposed to get a good bit of rain next several days, so do this while I can use the sun to um for my welder and stuff so I don't have to turn on the generator. Yeah. So. Tammy says so glad you could sit back and enjoy. Yes, so are we. You'll hear more about that. All right, well, I'm gonna, You're gonna go. I'm gonna go and show them your other handiwork. Right. So well take care everybody. God bless. Hope you have a good day. <laughs> Alright, I'm spinning this around and I'm trying not to give you there we go. Up my nose again like I usually do. Okay, so um yes, it just I'm actually gonna spin it back around. It just looks it looks amazing. It's the beautiful thing is we got things really tidied up uh, for Thursday and it is remaining that way and that's what we're going to talk about today. This is Miss Peaches, Miss Peaches birthed um, three kitties that I could count so far yesterday. Hey baby, Windermere just called. They must, they might have somebody to come show. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to check that. That would be awesome, wouldn't it guys? Woohoo! Okay, so I'm... And, and there is our little cat house, haha. -ha. Um, he thought that was funny when he's over there smiling now. <laughs> he, he made that for the cats last year when we brought them home. And they use it a little bit, but it became a nice little birthing house last night. I don't know if I can show you the kittens or not in there. Let me see. Repurposing old jeans. Uh, they're right there, but they're hard to see. It's dark in there. I'll show you more of those when they... Um, come around but here he is getting all the trim work up in the entry it will have new flooring all the way on uh, around so it's looking really nice sorry peaches I'm closing you out of here beep beep watch yourself okay
Look at this, it feels so good. Oh, it's spinning. Now I should be good, okay. I got the other connection, okay, good. Hopefully you guys saw the railing, but oh, guys, I cannot tell you how glorious it feels to be in a decluttered home. And that's what we're gonna talk about. I'm gonna put some lights on here. I've got my clutter here. I've been actually working at the table, but um, let me spin this around. There we go, all right. So, it just feels amazing. If you guys didn't see it, I did a tour on Thursday, right before the realtors got here, and we made it, we pulled it off. We've got some things we're working on still to make it more um, sellable, like he mentioned. And as Chad said, I am gonna check and see what that message was, because if they wanna come show the house, I certainly don't want to hinder that in any way. Oh, wow. All right, guys. I'm gonna jump off momentarily and I'm gonna jump back on. They do have somebody that would like to see the house today. So I don't wanna hinder that. This is our first showing. So I am going to quickly make that phone call and I will jump back on here and we will do part two, okay? So stay tuned in a few minutes, all right? I'm sorry for the interruption, but this is important stuff. We've been working hard for this. So I'll, I'll be back in a little bit. God bless. All right, part two. This is Tammy Trier with TrierWilderness.com. My family and I live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho. And um, if you've been following us for a while, you know that we are in the process of selling our home and getting ready to hand off the torch to another family. Good morning again, Tammy. That was exciting. So I jumped off of part one because um, just as I went live, I got a phone call from the realtors that we have listing our home and they have somebody that is definitely going to come between two and three today to look at the house. So praise God for that. That is awesome. So I'm very excited and um, God's at work. That's all we can do is just uh, keep trusting him. But this is awesome stuff. Hang on one second or my dog will keep doing it. the plywood floor and it looks textured to him with his uh, cataract eyes so he scratches to try to make his bed and there's nothing there to bed on so he'll just keep scratching forever so anyway I know yes right this is exciting so I'm really really stoked about that um, and just so grateful that we've had this time to just the, the downtime and um, we've had to kind of refocus our attention to things that we stuffed aside um, good morning, Nikki and Sanford. Um, you know, we stuffed things aside while we were pushing so hard to get this done. And there's a bunch of things I want to go back, hindsight 2020, and discuss with you guys. Um, you know, we all try to take really good care of our... There we go. He was calling again. But I know he's just leaving a message of the person that's going to show the things, so I'm not going to worry about it. But how exciting. Okay, so 2 to 3 o'clock today, we have a showing of our home, which is exciting. But going backwards here and doing a little bit of discussion on some things, you know, you guys have been following me for quite a long time, most of you, and you have experienced my healing journey and me talking how important it is for self-care and taking good care of ourselves and taking time for ourselves and being in control of our schedules, right? Well, I totally, we totally bombed that the last three weeks. We just about killed ourselves. And we do, we all tend to do that. And sometimes in life, you do need to push a little harder to make it through certain areas and certain things. And, you know, it's good we did. We made it. We've got it listed. It's beautiful. Good morning, Sherry Ann. So, you know, it is, it is beautiful. And I just want to encourage you guys that when you are going through the nitty gritty and the tough and you do have to push to just take breathers. I mean, I felt totally inhuman. I was going backwards in my healing. And we went and had an appointment Sunday afternoon um, with my deep muscle therapist. And it was an absolute blessing. Um, we were so full of stress and so out of place and just not in a good healthy state. So we did that on Sunday and we have been recuperating ever since. We really got drained. Um, but that's part of the process and part of healing, 
But I want to encourage you guys. I talk about it all the time. I wasn't a good example those last three weeks because we were really pushing hard. I had deadlines for websites. We had deadlines for this house. And just so much was going on all at one time. Good morning again, Deborah. Um, so it's just important that we remember that. There is nothing on this planet that is worth killing ourselves for, materialistic-wise. Um, we've got to learn to take care of ourselves, and that is one of the biggest blessings I've gotten once we've listed this, is that I'm excited to wake up. Not that I wasn't excited to wake up before, um, but it's different. My house is spotless. My man's handiwork is everywhere and it is just breathtaking to me. It is just comforting to me. It gives me such great peace. And just that we could slow down our pace. We've walked every day. That's why I was late this morning. We just had gotten back from a walk. I've got him out walking with me, which is really huge because he's constantly moving. So am I. But that movement isn't the same as getting out and just unwinding and walking and de-stressing. When you're walking, you might be thinking of the things you need to do and stuff, but it's still different. It's, it's a release for your body. So I'm very thankful that I've been able to get him out walking with me. And I know many of you guys have been on the decluttering journey. Hello again, Shelly. Hello, Holly and Deborah. And... Guys, for those of you that were on before, I stopped. I made that phone call to the realtor. We are showing the house between two and three today. So say some prayers. I'm very excited. We've got a lot of interest in it. Um, it's going to take a special person. It's going to take a special person to take over the torch here and want to live this full sustainable lifestyle. And just got to hope and pray. I know I'm trusting God for the outcome. So... He's going to bring us the right person. It's just a matter of timing, when. And so this is our first showing. And I'm kind of grateful that we had a couple days to just unwind. But it's progressing. So we will see what happens. Exciting stuff. And I'm glad I got to share it with you this morning. Um, many of you have been on the self-care and the decluttering journey yourself. And um, I would love your input. Shelly and Tammy, I know you guys have been joining me on this journey. Shelly, I think you started before me even. Um, but there are some great rules of thumb to put in place when you're tackling this type of a journey. You know, if you want your house to look like this and to feel like this, I mean, it is an awesome thing um, to see the mountain man understand my pleasures in, in not having clutter. He feels it now. There's just such a great peace in, in not having stuff and piles. And one of the biggest things, I even said it this morning, is that when we can eliminate the things in our home that we don't use on a daily basis and store them elsewhere, there are lots of things that we need to have. We have canners, we have juicers, we have canning jars, we have our uh, meat processing equipment, the grinder and the, pa um, the vacuum sealer and all these different things that we don't use on a daily basis. Well, all of that was shoved under my bed. And as you guys saw in the progression pictures, it looked horrible when you walked in there. It was just such a cluttered mess because you saw the beautiful bed, but all this junk underneath it. And my cleaning stuff was under there and my supplements were under there. So to be able to give that stuff a home, a permanent home elsewhere, cleared out under there, it just looks so refreshing and it just looks so, I don't know, I just love it. I love it. And that was what we were going for all along, but through the process of being under construction for nine years in varying ways, you know, you just have stuff and the shed was getting shoved with stuff that, you know, people were gifting us with and and stuff that we had accumulated and being able to go through that. I went through that three different times, guys. And it's a progression, you know. There's things that we don't want to get rid of, even though we haven't touched it for three years or more. You know, that I might need it. Or I've been working up to a point where I can de-stress and then do that. And there are some things like that. Some of my craft things, some of my project things, I know I will use them. I just need to have time in my life to use them. So you got to sort through things. you got to be realistic. If you've got things from high school and you're in your 40s and 50s, it's time to part. It's time to part. I had some. <laughs> I had some clothes in there still. And shoes. Um, 
So as you progress through this, and it was a good feeling to progress to a point where when we went out to that shed, you opened the door and you had to move things out to get in it. To now, most of the house is out there and there's plenty of room to move still. We've gifted things, we've sold things, we've donated things, and that too is a good feeling. So when you can um, get this stuff out of your space that you're in all the time, um, it really adds comfort. When you have all that clutter, I did not realize how much it was consuming me. You know, I'm pretty easy going with the scaffolding in here for months and the dirt and that because I grew up in a home that was a constant progression from third grade till my graduation party. My dad finished the windowsills and the flooring uh, for my, gradu my graduation party, you know, the uh, trim work and stuff. So it was a progression my whole life. So I was used to that. So it's not something out of the ordinary, but you don't realize even though you're easy going with it and you roll with it how much it consumes you until you've got it all cleaned up. I mean, I get up and I'm just giddy. It is just an awesome feeling and I don't have the stress. I don't stand up in the morning with my cup of coffee and just stand there flubbering, figuring out what direction I'm going in because I don't have to anymore. I don't have to worry. There's not a million things calling my name now. There's just a couple things. I've still got to stain the railings, which I'm hoping to do later today. I've got client work to do, and at one point, one of these days, I'm going to go in the Mountain Boys room, which has actually gotten lighter, and just finish that. So it's good to have a plan. Without a plan, there's nothing. So you've got to start with a plan and start with the idea of wanting to do this. There have been a couple comments here. Shelly says, well, uh, Holly says, praying this is it. Thank you. We are too. And Shelly says, still working on that. And it is a constant progress. If we wouldn't have had a push, um, I don't think we would be as far ahead either. So uh, good morning, Pamela. And Tammy says, I stalled out. Too much was going on trying to get back at it. This is a hard season. Um, winter time is a little more lax. You do have snow removal and firewood and different things you've got to contend with then if you're living this kind of lifestyle. But summer and spring really bring on the push for us homesteaders and off-gridders because there's a lot to do. Um, there's grass to be mowed. There's gardens to be taken care of. There's animals to be birthed. There's a lot of things going on. So again, you got to show yourself grace and, and not let it, although you stalled, and many others have stalled, is not to let that be a deterrent. Just let it be something where you pick back up when you have the time because the rewards are fabulous and absolutely great. Shelly says, I have to go through my stuff again. My kitchen is looking good, but I have rooms that are piled high with things I still need to organize or get rid of. Yeah, and that's the process. I mean, you saw my rooms. Every single stinking room had piles. It was awful and it was very overwhelming. Um, but the nice thing is, as I was cleaning out the shed, I was emptying totes. I think I cleaned 20 totes the other day from the shed that I repurposed in the house with things. Um, I did a lot of boxing, but I want my things in totes because we don't know where we're going to be and how things are going to move forward. So I want things in a protective way. I, we've got a lot of books. So the books are in boxes, but the boxes are in totes. And books are heavy, so the nice thing is you can carry them individually out to the shed and just stick them in the big totes. Going from the shed to a storage uh, trailer is going to be easy. Um, you know, so you got to have in mind your process. We have a lot of things too that we will be getting rid of after we know what we're doing. Um, it would be a crime to get rid of things and then have to go buy them, especially if we've had them for years. So not knowing what we're moving into, we've kept certain things, especially kitchen things and remodeling things. You've seen his MacGyver stuff. He's very good at what he does. So when he has things, it's worth keeping because in his mind, he has a purpose or can envision it. So I don't, I don't get involved in that. I think what he is able to do is amazing and his ideas are amazing. So we... We, carry, we are carrying this stuff forward, and at that point, when we realize we don't need it, that's when we can donate, gift, sell, whatever, and even downsize more. But I have hit a point in my life where I would just love to be able to fit the contents of my needs in a backpack and to have seven days worth of clothes and call it good, um, with the exception of winter stuff and hunting gear. But, I mean... I. 
I am to the point where I'm really wanting to be very minimal. And it's a choice. It feels good for me. But that's not for everybody. But my recommendation is to take 15 minutes a day and just attack something. If it's your junk drawer, if it's your um, sock drawer, if it's a part of your closet, you got to do small bits and pieces. Now, I can manage being in that stuff for hours on end and plan that and I'm okay with it and if I don't be, if I'm not able to be in there the whole time it's not going to deter me I'm driven um, but some people can get really discouraged when you dive into stuff like that and um, you get called away or you don't make enough progress or you get overwhelmed by it so it's best to start in small bits and pieces and go from one end of your room to the other if you have to. And start in the smallest room so that you see accomplishment right away. Because when you can do that, that's going to feed your fire. Chad, between 2 and 3 o'clock today, we are showing our house. Praise God, right? This is awesome. So yes, I had to jump off and take that. I know you know that. So keep praying, guys. Keep praying. Um, and welcome back, Chad. So... I really want to encourage you guys to keep at this. There is a friend of mine. Yesterday I was balancing our checkbooks. It's been a while. Good morning, Janet. So while I was balancing the checkbooks, this is a beautiful thing. This is how I move about my home and I've always have. Balancing my checkbook does not require me to be steadfast in any particular location. So I got my blue chair out to my lawn chair and I sat out in the deck in the sun, got some color and worked on balancing my checkbook. Got that balanced. So, you know, you do these things in progression. I ended up having to do a treatment yesterday. So while I was doing my treatment, I was doing some research work. You know, so if you can do things in bits and pieces and be good to yourself at the same time, and the reason I'm sharing that is because while I was doing my budgeting, I was listening to podcasts. So I was being good to myself, which felt really great to be able to just be outside and get some fresh air. I was also listening to Kathy Lip, um, the Declutter Academy. She is amazing. I've been following her for years, and she kind of inspired today's chat. I had a couple others in the, in the wings, but I had to share this great feeling that I have um, as a result of this decluttering project and like I said mine got pushed ahead really fast because we are on a mission and we needed to do this and I needed to make room in the shed so um, it was kind of uh, a, a wild and crazy venture I can do those things like I said but not everybody can Kathy Lip has some great great ideas great processes and um, her journey has been a 10-year journey to get to where she's at and being able to declutter really does change your life because I'm no longer in a panic of any kind. Where before, everything just made it feel like a panic, even though we, we were in panic mode. But everything else just seemed to compound that because you look at all this stuff and think, oh my word, it's going to take forever to get it cleaned up. Where all those totes and all those tools and the scaffolding was still in, in this space Thursday morning and we managed to in a day get it all wrapped up and all cleaned up and all taken care of so it's the other beauty of teamwork if you can get your spouse on board which can be sometimes hard um, in both both sides because um, not everybody is neat or organized or has that mentality so that can add things to it too and make it a little tricky um, Kathy Lip mentions designating space, that you have this space and then how you organize that space is up to you. Um, but the rest needs to stay clean. And then you've got to accept that. And she said in the beginning for her that was really hard because his space wasn't tidied the way she wanted it to be. But that's what she, the rule she set. And, and that was the only spot so that... If they had guests coming or something, that was the only thing that needed to maybe be a little tidied up. Everything else was good. And that's the other benefit she talked about. And we, we have guests from time to time, not as often as we used to. Um, but you don't have to panic about getting things in order. I've got people coming between two and three. 
I don't have to get off of here early and be in a panic because everything stayed the way it was. Everything has a home. All the excess is out of here. And what little I have here is what I'm working on. My office still looks crisp and clean. I can put my mat out and stretch because I have floor space. My um, loft has all the exercise equipment in it. I can put my mat there and do the melt method up there. I can, I can do whatever I want. And that's what makes this so incredibly awesome is that I don't have to like stay here because the rest is overwhelming me. I can go wherever I want to and I feel great peace. And you guys have to have this. It is just such an awesome, awesome thing. I mean, there's a lot of peace that came with just finally getting this listed too and getting it out there and just seeing all that we accomplished in such a short period of time. But I just want to encourage you guys to keep stepping into it. Tammy and Shelly, and I know Kelly's been doing the same, but I know she's not on here. She is working outside. Um, I want to mention this. Um, speaking of Kelly, I'd like to ask you guys to keep her in your prayers. She has some back issues, and they are homesteading uh, very greatly. They've got greenhouse going, birthing of animals. They've got uh, barn cleanup. They've got a large acreage to keep mowed. So she's doing a lot in a very small amount of time, too. And um, I just would like you to keep them all in your prayers, please. And this is Courtney also, who has had the brain tumor and has been getting rechecked and no growth. So we're going to continue to pray there that it just goes away. Um, I'd like to ask you guys to keep Chad in your prayers, please. He could just uh, use some strength and perseverance in his journeys. And just pray for each other because we all have things and stuff and things happening. I'd like to ask that you keep Martin and Kim and their family in your continued prayers. I haven't seen any new progress updates on Martin, although she did go into his room last week one day and his feet were off the side of the bed. It looked like he was trying to escape. She shared a picture. So it's pretty crazy. You know, God is working there. God is instilling um, activity and and their miracle is going to come. It's just in God's timing as always. So he's been in a coma for over 90 days. So you can only imagine the challenge there for his wife and the children. And um, I'd like to ask you to pray for a woman named Martha. Um, the zombie farmer on YouTube, it is his uh, cousin or niece. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not recalling now. But she had something suddenly happen and is fighting for her life in the hospital right now. So please keep them in your prayers. Uh, keep Charles in your prayers. He could use some prayers today too. And Mona and Ken. And um, if any of you need prayer, please do not hesitate to ask for prayer. Um, even if you need to uh, just say that you need prayer. You do not need to give all the details. We totally understand um, that some things just need to be left unsaid. God knows our circumstances. So um, if you need prayer, please don't hesitate. That is one powerful gift we can all give one another. So do any of you have some tips for decluttering and things that have worked for you? Uh, I, I am just so excited to have downsized the way we have and to really be on that journey and I'm anxious to go through the shed again and all the contents once we know more what we're doing because I know I can probably get rid of half of that stuff as we move forward and know what we are and aren't doing so that's also another good feeling and to be able to share the things that's a great feeling to be able to donate to people um Something else that Kathy Lip was talking about yesterday, I was kind of doing like a uh, marathon uh, Kathy Lip podcast listening while I was doing, like I said, it was a long time since I balanced the checkbooks. Actually, shame on me. It's since January, but they're all balanced. They're all good. And um, I encourage you to do that monthly so you don't have to go through that chaos also. Getting on good plans and good schedules it's really key and it is on my calendar for once a month, but I kind of blew past those with all of the rest that we were doing. 
Um, one of the things that Kathy Lip mentioned is if you have things like they were discussing a fondue pot. The one woman had a fondue pot. Her other friend did a lot of fondue parties but didn't have one, didn't want to invest in one. This other woman didn't use it much, so she kept lending it out to her. And after about 12 times and they were packing to move, she realized that she's never used it once, but her friends used it 12 times. So she just gifted it to her. And, you know, we got to be aware of those things. You know, sometimes we get things on a whim. Sometimes we get things expecting to use them and we don't. Um, sometimes they're gifted to us and we just don't ever, they don't fit. Um, she even talked about the Instapot. And I know many of you guys are out there using the Instapot. I do not have one. Um, I use my sun, my sun ovens, my solar cookers in that fashion. Um, I do have a stove top, um, small pressure cooker for meals. So... Um, that would be what I would uh, venture to because the other is electric and it uses heat, so it's going to use a lot of power for off-grid living. So I don't use such a thing, so I could see the purpose in gifting it, but this woman didn't use hers much either and had a friend that would use it every day. Uh, so, you know, being able to gift friends, even if it's temporary things. They also talked about the baby's uh, crib and uh, bassinets and things like that. You know, if you are... are in the ages of having babies and littles, you know, those are things that you can gift back and forth with the intention of getting it back so that when you're ready to use it again, you know, so there's lots of things you can do to declutter our homes. The other thing is learning to say no. We have a lot of people that offer us things on a pretty fairly regular basis. Um, and for a while there, we were accepting a lot of things. And now we have found that unless we really need it, we don't accept it. We just graciously decline. And uh, that is helpful too, because that is a real easy way to end up with a lot of things and clutter that we, you know, you don't need. Clothing happened to be one of them. And we go through clothing really quickly out here. Um, with all that we do with the tree sap and just the hard work that we do. So it's nice to have extra clothing on hand, um, but just be cautious of that. We don't have to take everything that people give us. The mountain boy is learning lessons in that now because he's one of those magnets where people just love to give him things and really cool things too. Um, but he's learning to, to say no because he doesn't have anywhere to go with them. So it's a process. All of this is a process. But I would love your tips on um, your decluttering and things you have found and um, things that you hang on to that you struggle with and tend to hang on to more than you should. You know, I find that teachers and um, business people tend to hang on to office supplies uh, a little more. I used to do that. I used to have an office supply fetish, uh, but I don't have that anymore. Now I have gone really minimalistic. I have two uh, mechanical pencils and a couple pens in different colors so that when I'm balancing checkbooks or writing different things, I can uh, designate different colors. But I've gone very minimalistic there too. And I've also gone digital, which eliminates a lot of paper garbage. We burned a lot of paper stuff from filing cabinets uh, through this process too. So it's really good to get rid of that stuff as well. But I do have some things I wanna read to you. I need to take a quick drink here. All right, I thought this was a interesting um, devotional. This was actually today's, and it's from uh, the Word for You Today, and it says, congratulations on your new location. Oh, I'm gonna read Tammy's quick before I jump into this. Tammy says, I have always hung on to things I have been given. I did finally decide to take a picture of it and let it go. You know, that is a great tip. Um, I started to do the same thing. I still have some of the kids' bigger projects, but a lot of the things I take pictures of too and then just depart with it. Now, there's a lot of things that I've been gifted um, decoration-wise and things the Mountain Man has made for me. And you know, those, there's things that you can hang on to that really mean a lot to you. You know, I'm not saying that you've got to get rid of everything, but there, there are so many things like Tammy mentioned that we can take pictures of and just have the memory of it versus the physical object of it. And that 
happened a lot here too over the last couple months. So that's a great way to do it, a really great way to do it. And also taking pictures of important documents too. Um, not necessarily like your insurance policies and things like that, but like say it was like an older document from years ago, you don't know for certain that you'd need it. I'll give you an example. This is kind of funny. Um, we had a Mercedes back here in the wilderness. That's really kind of funny. It was a very big joke for a while. Um, we paid $500 for it. It got really good gas mileage and we used it for a couple years and then sold it for $500. So we made out well and um, it served us well. And of course the mountain man had to drive in the driveway with his hat sideways just because it was just really funny. Anyway, um, we sold that and the guy never transferred the title over. So we got a traffic ticket, which we disputed and didn't have to pay. But we also got a towing notice that it was towed. Um, he never took our plates off of it, which by the way, was a big mistake on our part. When you sell a vehicle, always take your plates off and that way they're forced to get their own plates. Um, it was just one of those deals where we wouldn't have had another car, so we didn't really worry about it, and he was driving it home, so we just left them on expecting to get them back. And anyway, so the towing record and the uh, ticket I took pictures of just so that I had copies of them if anything ever were to come about of either one of those. Um, but how, how silly. How silly people are and it didn't benefit them so their car got towed and they didn't even get the notice where it is or anything because it's in our name still so anyway maybe there was purpose in that I don't know maybe they were doing some shady stuff but taking pictures of that kind of stuff so that you're kind of covering your butt in some aspects and that you still have documentation of it but you don't have the paper trail because that that paper just adds up it's dust it's dirt it's clutter and I'm just so tired of that so um, that's another good way to do things great tip though Tammy thank you for sharing that um, okay so this is called congratulations on your new location I go to prepare a place for you John 14 2 hey David David is joining us from Africa please send prayers for David because they always have um, very dry weather this time of year and they also have lots of um, upheavals in his area of Africa but oh it's so good to see you too I'm so glad you're joining me God bless you buddy and give the family a hug for me okay um, a lady ordered two bouquets of flowers one for a friend who was relocating his business and the other for the funeral of a friend who had just died Unfortunately, the florist mixed up the orders. As a result, the friend relocating his business received flowers with a note saying, in deepest sympathy, while the deceased flowers came with a card saying, congratulations on your new location. I think that's great. That, that could have been better because that's what we want all of them to say. We don't want to guess. We don't want to guess on that. Redeemed child of God, one day you'll hear the words, congratulations on your new location. Heaven isn't a state of mind or a celestial cyberspace. It's a prepared place for a prepared people. The Bible talks of the whole family in heaven and earth in Ephesians 3.15. Perhaps someone who lo you've loved and lost is waiting for you there and you're looking forward to seeing them again. Perhaps you're wondering if we'll know each other. Yes, would we know less in heaven than we knew on earth? No. Paul says, then shall I know even as I also I am known. In 1 Corinthians 13, 12. Not only will we know each other, but we'll eat together and enjoy one another for all eternity. Imagine fabulous food with no cholesterol or GMOs. I love it. Love it. No disease. And best of all, no heartache. For God himself will wipe away all our tears, and there shall be no more death, sorrow, crying, nor pain. All of that gone forever. That's Revelations 21.4. Have you come to the place in life where you know for sure that if you died today, you'd go to heaven? That's my prayer for you. That's something that we need to know. And if you question it, and if you're not sure, who's going to benefit better? 
me knowing and 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 even if i'm wrong trusting that and trusting that i'm going to go to heaven or you who totally is in disbelief i want the guaranteed road even if i am wrong but i know i'm not i know i'm not and i'm and i trust in that and i want you to trust in that i want that to be your safeguard so you can have that assurance by placing your trust in the one who paid for all your sins and offers you the gift of eternal life. So if you do not have a walk with Jesus, but you would like one, he gave his life for us so that we could have eternal life and so that our sins would be washed away. That was a gift given to all of us. It is granted to each and every one of us. The only difference is that we have to accept it. And we have to trust in it and we need to believe in it. So in Romans 10, 9 through 11 and 13, it says, If you openly de declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That, my friends, to me is a blessing. And you can feel I'm wrong, and that's okay. But by my choice, I feel like I'm safeguarding myself and my family. My family is in the same place. We all trust that the Lord is going to take us to a miraculous place. And I would much rather trust in that than the alternative and we have seen God's blessings and I pray that you guys have seen God's blessings through us as a result of the walk that we are walking because God has been blessing us so tremendously on a daily basis and it is just so phenomenal to be able to walk it out to see it to feel it to feel his peace and the reason I share this today is because when we are in a place of clutter, our walk with God, even when that is our choice and we are walking with God, our, our walk with Him is cluttered because we are not able to detach from all of the stress and the struggles of what is surrounding us to have a wholehearted, uninterrupted time with Him. How many of you can say that? Because so often, you know, you start to pray and you get distracted. And that is a normal thing. I mean, our minds are constantly moving. And God knows that. And Jesus Calling, there is a devotional in there that talks about that completely. And it, it to me, is very funny where God is calling us back and redirecting our thoughts because he knows our mind just went into left field. It's a given. But when you live in a... David's on here. Hey, David. <laughs> God bless you. Pray for you all the time. <laughs> so when we are in a non-cluttered space, we have a much better chance to rein in on that relationship. And in, in all of our relationships, not just with God, but with my man, with my son, with our families, when we are not cluttered and feeling pulled in a zillion million directions, we have the ability to be more present and more um, able to focus. And those are important qualities because in this world today, everything is such a fast pace. Everything is wanting our time and wanting our schedules. And when we are able to be present more and pull into him more and pull into him more wholeheartedly and more focused, the relationship is so much better and so much stronger and just so much more amazing and I've I've felt that through my healing journey so much I've shared that with you guys but I can't even put into words the feeling I have every day when I wake up last night 2 45 I have to get up and leave copper out and I don't know what was going on with her stomach plus she's kind of intrigued by the kittens but that was not the case this time so I went and let her out and at 2 45 it looked like the stars were just trying to grab me. They were so bright and so brilliant. And you know, you just, you, I, I share it with you all the time, how it's so amazing to see the blessings around us. And when we are so less cluttered and, and so much more present, 
I just feel those blessings so much greater. They are just so much stronger, so much more vivid, and it's just amazing. And guys, I can't tell you, you know, we weren't feeling good even at, directly after Thursday just from pushing so hard. But even so, I just feel so on top of the world. And I couldn't help but share that with you guys today because it is an amazing feeling. It is an amazing feeling, you know, I've always said about, and many of you will relate, to have a clean sink in the morning. You know, that you don't have all the dirty dishes waiting for you and screaming at you. Well, imagine that a hundredfold with your entire home, being able to just be and, and do the things you need to do and to be focused and being present. I want that for all of you. And I also want more than anything is that you have the ability to say and, and hear congratulations on your new location when the time comes. We are all worthy of his love even though we don't give ourselves that ability. He loves us no matter what we've done, no matter what we do daily. That's why I keep saying to you, a new beginning is a new beginning. We all are going to falter. We are all going to fail. We are all going to make mistakes. We are all going to weaken in the flesh. But he still loves us. And you know, what's really awesome for me is to feel that love uh, abounding in everything we are doing in everything we are experiencing you know um he is taking the place of not only my father in heaven but my earthly father and i just feel so tremendously blessed and when you have that present and vibrant walk with him the communication is so amazing and you know i've always wanted that in the worst way i wanted god to talk to me i wanted a relationship like that and, it, and guys, it's an amazing place when you end up there that he does communicate with you in such unique ways. And when I'm out in the woods and I'm walking and I'm, or I'm doing my podcasting or I'm doing my devotions or I'm even doing live, he's always present and he's always presenting himself in such unique ways. And it's just amazing. And I want this for you guys so badly because, oh, if I could just wave my wand and gift you all with it, it would make my heart sing because this is just amazing. David says, for God so loved the world that he came for God, oh, that he gave, sorry, it repeated itself. He came for God so loved the world that he gave. This can be proved by this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Exactly, exactly. And it is such an amazing gift and we need to be able to share this gift with others. Um, I will say hi to the mountain man for you, David. Thank you. I'm so glad you joined us. Um, what time is it there, David? I'm just curious. I know you're, I forget, I think it's 18 or 25 hours difference. I forget. I know it's a long time. But guys, you know, I've been sharing Kim's testimony um, and some of the things she shared through this walk. I've been sharing my own transparency through this walk. And you know, there is so much, I, I am gaining from Kim's transparent walk and the things that she is saying. We can gain from each other so much when we share what we are walking through and are willing to be a little bit more transparent, a little bit more open. Um, you know, our struggles can be the things that inspire other people to move forward because oftentimes we all think we're alone. and. As we try to declutter our homes, like I said, it's a process. Some of us hoard more than others, and I've always been a keeper too. Um, you know, I, I didn't want to part with things because I thought I would use it. And you know, you do hit a point in life where you realize that, you know what, I'm really not going to use this, and I really don't need this. But there are also things that we need in our walk here, you know, that are very, very important, but they don't need to be in my day-to-day -day life. And by getting them out of my day-to-day -day life, I have given myself such peace and such joy. So focus a little bit at a time on your journey of decluttering because I promise you, it will, you will gain so, so much from it.
you will gain so much from it. And when you get it to the point like this where you fine tuned it to such a degree that you have little to work on, it just makes it so, so amazing. That's what I thought, David. Okay, so it's 940 in East Africa time, okay. But guys, we have such an amazing community. I have seen so many amazing things happen within these live videos and the way each, everybody is communicating with each other and praying for each other. So if you are watching this on the replay um, with me live and you're just behind the scenes and you don't have a steadfast walk with Jesus but you would like one, please don't hesitate to reach out. I would love to help you on that because I don't know what our journey would have been. Well, I do. Our journey would have been so, so incredibly horrible without him present in our walk here the last three, six years, and nine all together because it was a really amazing journey coming here. And it will be, as nice as this is, it will be an amazing feeling to hand that torch off and allow somebody to take over this gift that, we've created for ourselves, but to be able to gift it forward and to pay it forward and to see somebody enjoy it and then also to see what God's going to do in our next chapter. I couldn't imagine him not being present. So I am always very open in sharing my faith and always very open to help you gain your faith. So I hope this has inspired you in some way today. I hope that you um, can see a difference in us in just how God has worked. Good morning, Charles. I hope your appointment went well, and um, just focus on decluttering and being more present in your life, and remember to take care of yourself when the crazy hits, because the crazy is going to always hit, and we just need to remember to hone in and focus on what's most important, which is our livelihood, our well-being, and our walk with God. Because if we fully trust in Him, He's going to make it all come together. And we were trusting that. We just had a lot of things to get accomplished. But we did lose sight of taking care of ourselves. And I don't want you guys to do that. So I'm going to say a prayer for us all. Papa, I just thank you for your presence in all of our lives. I thank you for the gift of eternal life that you've gifted to us. Even when we were unrighteous and unworthy you love us despite our weaknesses and our faults and you promise us eternal life all we need to do is walk closely with you and be willing to give up our sins to you and ask for forgiveness and i just ask that anyone present and watching anyone in in any of our circles that we know could use you that we we are willing to speak up and share the gospel with them because it's, I can't imagine life without you in it. And I would just thoroughly love to see more people touched by our message here and the community that we've grown. And I just ask that you give everybody strength and perseverance this week to walk through whatever it is they need to walk through. I ask that you be with them and help them to be more present, help them to find more peace and joy in their surroundings. Help them to unload the unnecessary so that they can find a ex more extreme joy and peacefulness in their lives. There is just so much to be said about that. I just can't express it, even in words, just how great it feels. And I just ask that you be with all those on our prayer list. Be with Martha and her family and the zombie farmer. Be with uh, JC and Lori from the Boss of the Swamp. Be with Chad and Kelly. And Tammy and Charles and Janet and all those that are joining me today be with Pat Kenny as he's going through multiple myeloma and heart issues as a result of chemo and the anemia that sets in and just uh, put your healing hand on all those that need it and just be with Kim and Martin and just provide their miracle in your timely fashion and just be with all those in need and provide for everyone's needs. Give them the comfort of feeling your presence as you do for us. And just thank you for what you're going to do in all of our lives. You, your plans are always greater than ours, as I shared last week. And we just thank you for what you're going to do in our lives. We love you, and we ask all this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.
So guys, I wish you a really awesome week. You can be sure that you will maybe find me live again hooting and hollering if um, something transpires today at 2 3 o'clock. Um, this is an amazing home and has such amazing opportunities here and we just pray for the right person to take it over and uh, to be able to gift it to as well as them gifting us with a new chapter. And guys, I just thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules. Have a fantastic rest of your week. I love you all and may God bless you greatly. Take care.